Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Dice Masters with James and Zach. I'm Zach. And I'm James. Hello. Uh, welcome to How to Play Dice Masters Part 3. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about actions and globals, but we're going to jump right back into it. Uh, at the end of the last video, James had just finished his turn, and so we're going to jump into my turn. Uh, beginning of my turn, it's the clear and draw step. I've got this one energy in my reserve pool that I saved, uh, and I'm going to clear it and then draw four dice from my bank. So shake it up, draw dice. Now I only have three dice in my bag, and that means I'm going to refill with all the dice in the use pile, shake them up. But of course, they're all sidekicks, and so I'm definitely going to draw a sidekick. All right, and then I'm going to do my roll and reroll step, starting with the roll. Um, okay, that's a pretty decent first roll. I've got some uh, some wild energy here that I can do whatever I want with. Um, I already have a Jimmy Olsen, um, and Jimmy Olsen's ability is pretty interesting. While Jimmy Olsen is active, your Superman and Supergirl character dice cost two less to purchase and may be fielded for free. Um, I definitely would like to take advantage of that ability. Um, but having multiple Jimmy Olsons in the field doesn't do me any good because in Dice Masters, any while active ability doesn't stack. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reroll that Jimmy Olsen die and try to get some energy that I can use to buy maybe a Superman with. So I will reroll it. Oh, look at that. I got two fists. Uh, so uh, I am going to spend uh, four energy. Uh, three, three fists and this one generic to buy Superman. Well, Superman is a six cost, but as we just said, showed, Jimmy Olsen's ability means that if he's active in the field, I get to buy it for two less. And so these four energy are going to be enough to buy my Superman, and that question mark will count as the shield I need. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, I've got this other energy here, um, and we have kind of just been saving energy, but now it's time to talk about global abilities. So uh, I'm going to pull up my Resurrection basic action card here. Uh, Resurrection is a basic action. Both of us can buy it, but it has this little ability at the bottom there. It says in red, global. Uh, a global ability is a special kind of ability that both players can use as long as you have the energy to pay for it. Uh, globals can be on characters or they can be on actions, uh, but the character doesn't need to be in active or in the field, and you don't even have to be your own character. So James can use this ability. I can use abilities that are on James's cards. Uh, whether or not those are in the field, um, both players have access to them. So they can be pretty powerful in that way, but when you bring one, you got to be aware that your opponent can use it as well. In this case, the global ability says, pay a shield once per turn on your turn, draw a die from your bag, and prep it. And by prep it, they mean put it in the prep area. So I have this question mark, which I can use as a shield. And so I will spend it, and I will draw a die from my bag and put it in the prep area, or prep it. Uh, and in that way, uh, it's a pretty good way of making sure that I get to draw more dice or roll more dice next turn, and that will allow me to do more things. Uh, all right, uh, after that, I'm out of energy to spend, and so I will pass priority to James to see if he wants to do anything uh, before the attack step. James? Uh, thank you, Zach. Well, as you can see, I've got nothing in my reserve pool. If I did, I could also use global, because you can use them on your opponent's turn, as long as the global doesn't specify that it should be on your turn. So I couldn't actually use a resurrection, even if I had a shield, but I could use other globals. However, I don't in fact have any energy at all, so I'll pass right back to Zep. Uh, all right. Um, now it is my turn to attack, uh, but um, last time I got hit pretty hard without any characters in the field, so I think it'll be better if I save these characters so I have something to block with. Uh, and with that, I will end my turn and pass to James. Okay, well, I'm going to pull the one die that's still in my bag, and I'm going to put this lot into my bag and give it a good shake and pull out three more. There we go. Okay, so four sidekicks. Now moving on to roll and reroll. Let's have a go. Hmm. Okay. It's not bad, but I would I mean sidekicks are always good, but I quite fancy buying a Drax and also using the resurrection global ability that Zach just used, because I want to have more dice too. 
And I can't do both with just three energy and a sidekick. So I am going to re-roll these. That's one shield, which could be Drax or Resurrection, but I need another shield and two more energy. There we go. Okay, couldn't be better. So I will use that three energy, <coughs> including one shield, to buy a Drax. I'll put the energy into my outer play and the Drax into my use part because I just bought him. And I'm going to use this question mark as a shield to pay for, for the Resurrection Global, which means that I draw one die and put it in my prep area. There we go. Um, I could have used that global in my attack step after blockers are assigned, but in actual fact, I don't think I'm going to have an attack step. Well, I shouldn't tell Zach yet. Um, okay, Zach, I'll pass priority to you because I've got nothing more I can do at this point. And in this case, I have spent all my energy. I have nothing in reserve, so I can't use any globals at the moment, so I will pass back. And as I just said, uh, Groot is rather a defensive character, so I'm just not going to declare an attack step, and I will pass turn to Zach. All right. So, uh, I got nothing to clear this time, so I will just draw, and I will draw four dice out of my bag. Uh, that plus the one that I have in the prep area are going to get rolled here. Uh, okay, so I have got five energy, which is pretty good. I can do a lot with that. Um, I think I'm, it's always nice to have wilds, because you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and it's nice to have... Um, a shield because we've been using that resurrection global and that helps you do a couple of things uh, but I would like um, to reroll these energy to get something that I can use a little bit more effectively okay so I've managed to roll another wild and a bolt and a shield this time uh, so first of all I am gonna pay two energy uh, to buy misdirection. So it doesn't matter what energy I use uh, because misdirection is a basic action. And so I will just pay these two energy and I will put a misdirection die in my use pile. Remember that the energy that I spend go out of play until the end of turn. Um, and now I will show something else that you can do with resurrection that is pretty helpful. So not only do I get to draw a die from my bag, but right now my bag is empty. I don't have any dice in it. So if I use the resurrection global, I'll pay a shield or a while in this case to draw a die from my bag, which means all of these dice are going to get put into my bag because they're in my use pile right now, and then I will shake it up, and then I will draw it. Ooh, Superman. Uh, so, um, as you can see, this is a way of excluding these five sidekicks from going back into my bag uh, and allowing me to get the dice that I'm more interested in, like Superman, out of the bag a little bit faster, which is a pretty cool side effect of the Resurrection Global. Um, okay. I don't have any more two-cost characters that I can buy, and um, I think I'm just going to hold on to those two shields. Um, I think there's something I can do with them. Uh, so I will pass priority to James. Uh, no, I've got nothing, Zach, so I'll pass right back to you. Okay. Um, I could attack now. I could get some damage through, but Jimmy's ability is really better if he stays out into the field and Steve Trevor is only to attack right now so I think I'll pause there and um, we'll see what happens next turn. Pass turn to James. Thank you very much. Okay I'm gonna give the bag a shake and take out another four dice. And we got here. Okay. Ooh that was a good pull. So I've got this one from last turn and I've got an action die and rocket and a couple of sidekicks. Right. Let's give them a roll. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a pretty typical roll. I don't have <coughs> any action faces on my action dice. I've got generic energy. Uh, you will notice that every energy face of an action die gives you two generic energy, which is a slight advantage over character dice, which have two two energy faces and one one energy. Um, so you're always going to get two energy off them, but it is generic energy, um, which is which is useful. But if you wanted to buy, for example, uh, Star Lord for four, 
you could use the energy as part of the four, but you would need a fist as well. These can't contribute in any way to that. So in any case, I really want to have the action faces because I want to show you how to use action faces. And I really want rocket on the same side. I'd quite like, uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to try for a sidekick as well, I think. Wow. Okay. That's looking, that's looking pretty good. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, all right, so I've got two um, action faces on my action dice. I've got a sidekick, uh, I've got an energy, and I've got uh, Rocket on uh, his second face. So he's got three attacks, which is pretty decent. So what I'm going to do first of all is field the sidekick for free. And I'm going to field Rocket by paying... Okay, this is in... And I'm going to pay this into transition. Uh, out of play, excuse me. <coughs> okay, now I'm left with these two action dice, so we better find out what they do. Basically, uh, when you roll an action dice to its action face, in order to use it, generally, unless it's continuous, which you can read about in the article, unless it's continuous, uh, you're going to use it by putting it into out of play and following the instructions on its card. Okay, so I'm going to try to use this one first, which is misdirection. And I'll just pull that up for you if I can. Okay, Mr. Action says, swap target active character die you control with a character die in your use pile, placing it on the same level. Uh, <clears throat> it does have a burst and double burst. Uh, you also draw, draw a die from your bag and prep it. But I don't have a, a burst symbol, so I'm just going to, uh, going to ignore that particular instruction. <clears throat> But I will do the first bit. So I'm going to place this die into out of play to use it. And then I get to swap a character in my field with something in my use pile. I knew this might come up. So last turn, that's kind of why I bought Drax. Um, so that I knew that he would still be sitting there in my use pile. So now I can swap the Drax there with one of the characters in my field. Normally, I would have a free choice. I could choose any of them, but unfortunately, I've kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit because <coughs> Groot's text says, while Groot is active, your guardian character dice cannot be targeted by global abilities or action dice. <coughs> Target means to pick something, and I need to pick one of these to swap with Drax. <laughs> unfortunately, Groot is telling me that I can't swap any of the guardians, which is these two, so I will have to swap the sidekick. And in fact, that's not the end of the world, um, <clears throat> because I'll get to keep my Guardians characters, and I will add Drax to them. Now, sidekicks, as we know, are considered to be level 1 character dice, so I will pull that out of the field, and I will put Drax into the field on his level 1. And I can find that by looking at his card. Uh, level 1 is a 1, 2, 4. There we go. Excellent. So now... <clears throat> I've got uh, three characters in the field, and we're looking pretty good. And I've still got one action dice to use. So this one is Surprise Attack, so let me show you that. Surprise Attack says, deal one damage to target character die. If I had a burst or a double burst phase, I could deal two damage, but I don't. So I think uh, Zach has in his field a character with just one defense. So if I deal one damage to that one defense Steve, I think he's gonna he's gonna get knocked out. So I will use that by moving it to out of play, and I will do the one damage according to its ability to Steve. Ah, surprise! He's gonna get KO'd, so he's gonna end up in the prep area. Ah, okay. Now I've thinned out Zach's field a bit, and I've got three characters, and he has just the one. Um, so I think I quite feel like attacking. But before I attack, I have to pass priority to Zach to see if he wants to do anything like globals. Zach, over to you. Uh, all right. Well, I see some damage incoming, so I think I'm going to try and mitigate it just a little bit. One of James's cards, this Groot, has a global ability. Global, pay two shields, gain one life, use this ability only once per turn. 
Now, it is only once per turn, but it doesn't say it has to be your turn, so I can use it on James' turn. And now that he's passed me priority, I have an option to use global. So since I've got some damage coming in anyway, I figure maybe I will pay two shields, which I have helpfully saved here, and I will go up to 17 life, uh, and hopefully that'll help mitigate some of the damage I'm about to take. Pass back to James. Excellent. Right. Um, there's nothing more I can do in my main step. I have nothing more to feel, nothing more to pay. So Zach has passed, and I'm going to pass my opportunity to use any globals and move straight to my attack step, because I want to do some damage. Now, there's one thing I didn't explain about Drax. If we look at his card text, he says, while Drax is active, once per turn, if another character die is KO'd, Drax gets plus three attack. And... What do you know? But a character was KO'd. It was Zach's character, but that doesn't matter. It just says her character. So, because uh, Zach's Steve was knocked out, uh, Drax, at that point, automatically gained a plus three attack. So instead of being a 1-2-4, he's a 1-5-4. So I've got a 1-5-4 and a 1-3-2 coming at you, Zach. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to declare an attack by moving those into the attack zone and let Zach deal with them. Ooh, okay. So I've got three attack Rocket Raccoon coming at me and a five attack Drax coming at me. Now it would make sense to block the five attack because it's more, uh, but my two attack Jimmy is not going to be able to knock out that Drax. And so I'll block him, but he'll go back to the field and then James could just keep attacking me over and over again. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of damage here, but be a little bit strategic. I'm going to send my two attack, three defense Jimmy to block James's Rocket Raccoon uh, because Jimmy will be able to KO it, even though he'll get KO'd as well. And Drax will go through unblocked, but don't forget, when characters go through unblocked, they leave the field. And so that means James will have a little bit of a lighter field when it gets to my turn. So I only get to deploy one blocker, and that's how I'm blocking. You sneaky thing. Uh, okay, at this point, we could both use globals because blockers have been assigned and this is the next global window. And I, if I had any more action dice, I could also use them now. But we don't. Uh, so I'm going to pass my opportunity to do that. I think uh, I'll politely pass to Zach, but I'm, I'm guessing he's going to pass as well. That's right. And we will move on to assigning damage. Um, Okay, so Drax is pretty easy. Drax is going to go through and deal his damage directly to Zack. Remember, he's a 2 plus 3, is a 5. So he'll do 5 damage to Zack, and I'll move him to out of play. Uh, and simultaneously to that damage, um, my rocket will do 3 to Zack's Jimmy. And my Jimmy is going to deal its 2 attack to Rocket, and so Jimmy will get KO'd by the damage. But I think he's going to KO Rocket as well. Yep. Uh, Rocket's defense is only two, so he's going to get knocked out. And we will clean up by moving him to prep. But there's one more thing before we go on. Uh, if we look at Rocket's text, it says when Rocket Raccoon is KO'd, deal his attack to target character die. Whew, I didn't see that one coming. Um, <laughs> so that triggers at the moment when he receives damage in excess of his defense which he just did and so he's been he's been knocked out and so now i have to deal three attack from rocket attack to a target character die this is a this is a character ability and it's not you may it just says do it so i have to do it but i've got a bit of a problem because there's now no more characters in zach's field because jimmy was ko'd at the same time rocket was and the only character left that i can actually deal damage to is my own Groot. So, so basically, as Rocket gets knocked out, he's going to smack Groot on the bum. Um, but luckily, it's only a, a three attack smack and Groot's defense is six. So he will survive and that damage will clear at the end of turn. So it's not a complete disaster. But, but if he had a smaller defense figure, um, Groot might have been knocked out, leaving me with a completely clear field, which would have been a bit bad. Anyway, think through your actions before you take them. At that point, uh, I'm pretty sure we've done everything, so I should move these dice down into my proper used pile, and it's Zach's turn. All right, draw my clear and draw step, and I don't have any energy to clear, but I am going to draw four dice, so we'll go ahead and shake up the bag, and then I will draw out four dice. 
Um, if you combine those with the dice in my prep area, that's a pretty big turn. Uh, as you can see, one of the ways you can get a lot of energy to buy really expensive characters is just to get your own characters knocked out somehow, and that way you get to roll more dice. Um, but in this case, I think I'm really going to want to roll characters so James doesn't keep attacking me over and over again. So, let's roll them up. Ooh, that is a pretty good roll. As you can see, I've got Jimmy, I've got Steve Trevor, I've got Superman, and I've got that action. The only thing is that I think I want to try to buy another Superman this turn, so I'm going to need uh, Jimmy to come up as double fist instead of a single fist, and I will need a shield. So I'm going to save these dice, and then I'm going to reroll these ones. Hey, look at that. So I have got these energy. So. Superman has a pretty expensive fielding cost, two energy. But Jimmy Olsen's ability says, not only do I get to purchase Superman and Supergirl character dice for two less, uh, but they can be fielded for free. Uh, now Jimmy has to be active, and he's not currently, but I can do things in whatever order I want on my main step. So now that I finished my roll and reroll step, I'll move on to the main step. And the first thing I'll do is field Jimmy Olsen. And now he's active. Uh, I'll also go ahead and field Steve Trevor because he's free to field. Why not? Um, and now that Jimmy Olsen is active, I can field my Superman for free, which is pretty cool. That's a pretty high stat line for a free fielding cost. Um, okay, I've got four energy here, and I didn't have to spend any of it to field, which is pretty nice. So I will go ahead and spend these four energy to buy another Superman die. Uh, because Jimmy's active, he's going to be two less. Uh, and I have this action, which I could use right now like James did, but I'm going to try something else instead. So I'll go ahead and pass priority to James at the end of my main step here. I've got nothing, Zach, so I'll pass right back to you. Okay. Now I can hold on to this action, and I'll move on to the attack step. And I want to leave Jimmy out, but I am going to attack with Superman and with Steve Trevor. So I'll move them into the attack zone and see what James is going to do. Whew. Well, uh, I think I'm going to have to block something because that's uh, altogether quite a lot of attack. So I'm going to block your Superman, I think, with my Groot. All right. So Superman is blocked, so he's not going to deal any damage to James. And Steve Trevor is going to go through. But after blockers are declared, there's another opportunity to use globals and to use actions. Since I still have this action, I can use it. So uh, the misdirection action allows me to swap a character with a character die in my use pile, placing it at the same level. Since the attack zone is part of the field zone, Steve Trevor is still technically in the field. So I can use this action to swap Steve Trevor for my Superman. And since Steve Trevor was level two, Superman will come in at level two. Uh, and the way I find the level two side, by the way, is I just look at the card and it's the second one. So that means my Steve Trevor, which is unblocked, instead of being a three one, is now a six seven. And since it's still unblocked, it's gonna go through and hit James pretty hard. Ooh, I'm gonna pass any opportunity to use globals as I have no energy at this point. So we'll move on to damage resolution. All right, Superman is gonna deal seven damage to Groot, and this uh, other Superman is going to deal six damage to James. Oof. Okay, so I'll take the six, and I'll go down to 13, and my Groot will deal two damage to your Superman, which is not enough to knock him out, but the damage that Groot has taken from Superman is enough to knock Groot out. Sorry, Groot. All right, Superman that was blocked comes back to the field, and Superman that did his damage to James is going to go directly out of play, and then at the end of my cleanup step, we'll go back to the use pile. Okay, um, you should now have a pretty good idea how to play the fantastic game of Dice Masters. Obviously, there's lots more things to learn, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments to this video or on our Facebook page. Uh, you'll find the link in the description. Uh, also linked will be the article which goes with this video. Uh, I've written three articles now, so hopefully they will they will explain things in a little bit little bit more detail for you. Um, 
I'm sure there'll be more to come in the future. Uh, please do also check out our other videos, which show lots and lots of gameplay. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been useful. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.